What's up fam, it's your boy Demir here, purveyor of all sounds underground. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel today. I'll be discussing the topic of three ways to do sampling, uh, three creative ways that is, that you can easily work into your workflow. But before I jump into the details, what I need from you is that SLC. Hit subscribe, like, comment, and more importantly, hit the notifications bell to stay in touch with the new videos that we have up and coming. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, I think I shared something similar before in a previous video called how to turn logic into an MPC. But with Serato Sample, things are even easier, more fluid in my workflow, at least uh, from what I found. So what I got here is Serato Sample loaded up with the sample. Let's take a listen to the sample right here. So it's already got things stretched. Um, it's all synced up. It's in C major, as you can see here. Uh, really dope. You know what? Let me turn on my Pro Mouse. Love this. If you don't have this already, you do tutorials and stuff. I highly recommend it. It is mad dope. But we're gonna take off the drawing. All right. So I have Serato sample here. Uh, we got our sample loaded up and set to go. So the first technique I'm going to show you is chopping in quarters. And what I mean by that in terms of the quarter notes is that on a downbeat, you know, it should be on pad one. Pad two should have like a clap or snare. Pad three should be another downbeat. And then number four should be a clap again. So, you know, one and three are the downbeats. Two and four are the claps. So let me just delete this. So the quickest way I do this in Serato Sample is I use the set slicer mode and I just line up the marker, the sample here. Zoom in, as you can see, it's all set to go. And then I make sure this is on one and I hit slicer and it's chopped it up into beautiful quarter notes for me as we can see here when I play it out. So the downbeat is like my snare downbeat again you know and I can go on and on and what this allows for me is creativity and I know like as I look at the grid here that all of these are on the downbeat these are on the snare or clap downbeat again on the third pad uh, part of the grid and again claps again very easy simple to remember so as you're going through stuff like you know uh, let's just throw a beat on and, and mess with this. You get super creative and move it around because I'm just working through one through to four beats, right? Or come up with some really cool creative things. And I actually had to use this technique on a remix that A-Track commissioned uh, me to do for Stay the Night by Hero on Fool's, Fool's Gold. Um, and I had to do this because uh, Hero, the artist, lost the uh, project. So there's no access to stems. So I had to get super creative and just see what I could do by chopping up the original. And I use this exact technique. So this is sample chopping through a grid, making sure your downbeats are on one and three and the hand claps and snares on two and four. And if you push those through 16 different chops, you can come up with some really cool and creative things. So that's the first technique right there. Okay, so the next technique is what I just call randomness and serendipity. And again, Serato Sample allows for some really cool things to come about. So what I do is I hit either set random it comes up with a bunch of different chops here or you could just go to find samples and based on the transients it decides you know what is the best makeup here so you can see it's just gone with the quarter notes as we had already done so why don't we go with set random 
see what it does. And here we go. So this is a very uh, short sample. So, but at the same time, you you, know, you just never know what you can come up with. Like, and because it's stretched already, and all the chops are set up, you might come up with something unique. So, let's mess with it. So judge me, I can barely hear. I gotta keep the mic down to avoid feedback. The volume down rather to avoid feedback. This is a classic like disco French touch thing. Record this, throw a filter on it. And there you have another track. Okay, and my third point here is to leverage a Pioneer CDJ. Either a 2000 Nexus or a CDJ 3000 will do. I prefer the 3000 and I'll show you more of the details of what I'm talking about when I show you a video on that one because I just got them and I just love what you can do creatively with it. But when it comes to sampling, I think a lot of people overlook this. The facts are you can actually run an acapella through your CDJ, record the output, because it's already time stretched or whatever you done, pitched it to move it in key. And on the CDJ 3000, it's even easier. You just literally select the key and you line it up. The tempo's good. Boom, play it, sample it, the output directly out of your V10 or whatever other mixer you have. You can use the Rekordbox app on your phone and you can capture all of that and just drag it into your project. You can upload it to the cloud or whatever. I think a lot of people overlook this fact because it's a powerful sampling machine when you think about it, the CDJs. You never get artifacts in um, you know, whatever you're time stretching or playing. I mean, depending on a sample, but I mean, unless you go super wide on the pitch on the CDJ, I mean, I do it for effects while I'm DJing and you know, you can hear a lot of the artifacts because it's super, super slow. But most of the time it's quite seamless and it'll do an even better job than whatever Logic can. And I'd say arguably even Ableton, depending on the acapella that you want to work with. Just the ability to move it in key, set it up on your CDJ. You can't see them, they're off screen here. But then you just export that and bring it into your project and you are ready to go. So that's my third technique, leveraging the CDJ. I'm gonna do it with the CDJ 3000 on my first impressions video that's gonna come soon and you'll see more of what I'm talking about. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on three different ways to sample your chops and get things cooking in your workflow. I hope you found this useful. Let me know your thoughts on it. I usually join a conversation within 48 hours of posting these videos, so I'd love to hear what you gotta say about this one. And don't forget, the conversation doesn't have to end here. We got an amazing Discord community with like-minded aspiring DJs and producers who are on their come up, sharing a number of different ideas and tips, as well as production tools, and the list goes on and on and I'm sure it will be a value to you so check us out there and if you want more in-depth content you can check out my patreon at patreon.com slash demure official much love and respect to you peace